Hi, this is Janine Miller, and you are watching Pieces of Victory. Today we have on our show, Chanel Murray. She's a survivor of the Circle of Hope Girls Ranch located in Missouri. She is here today to tell her story of how she managed to escape four years of torture, torture in this compound. She was on America's Most Wanted, and there was an Amber Alert out for her. She is here today to tell her story of what happened behind closed doors at this residential program. Please welcome to the show, Chanel Murray. Chanel, it is so nice to have you on a show, Peace is a Victory. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing really good, thank you. How are you? Fantastic, fantastic. Um, I'd like to start at the very beginning of how it all happened. You are a survivor of the Circle of Hope located in Missouri, and the school is unfortunately still open today. It, it is a torture camp here in America, and I'd like to start at the very beginning. What was your home life like with your parents? Um, my mom and dad split up when I was um, eight years old. So. Um, yeah, so we got separated homes where we stayed with my mum and um, uh, I didn't get to see my dad or anything. So um, I, when I became a teenager, I started acting out, uh, started pushing boundaries. Um, so um, I got put in foster care when I was 13 years old. Oh, wow. How, how were you treated in the foster care? I'm sorry. Um, oh, I did, like... It, I think it was more about my rebelling more than anything, really. The foster parents, they're, they're quite good people, really, to tell you the truth. Um, it was just my rebelling. I did a lot of running away. I ran away from a lot of my problems and stuff. So um, I wasn't there for long. Um, I got. Did, um, did you feel yeah, like so, abandoned, by, abandoned by your parents? Is that it was, it was like Yeah, I felt abandoned. Um, I also like I had like a friend connection back then. I got take when I got moved to foster care. I got taken out of the area, uh, so I lost like all contact with family and friends, and I went to a new school and everything. So you had no contact uh, family or friends while you were in foster care. Yeah, just uh, they were all so far away, and back then there wasn't really we didn't really have mobile phones, so there wasn't that communication going on. Yeah. That has to be tough. It was a very <laughs> tough time. Um, I just like, I, I don't know, it was just as a teenager, it was just, it was just um, a lot of emotions. When you become a teenager, you're like, you're hitting puberty, you're hitting, like, you're, you've got to deal with all these emotions, and then my mum and dad split up, and it was a um, very um, emotional time for me. Um, I was a proper daddy's girl as well, you know what I mean? So, um uh, I just missed him, and it's just I just lashed out like yeah. in ways that I was just running away and using um, substances. Um, yeah, so I just just like yeah, just I couldn't deal with it really. You were self medicating, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. And maybe if maybe if you were able to communicate with your father or your mother. Uh, maybe you wouldn't be self-medicating. I don't know. Yeah. That out there. Um, what What happened? How did it? How did you end up in this lockdown reform school? So you're living in a foster care family. Yes. Yeah, so uh, my mum came visited me, and she said that you can go and live with your dad in America. So um, she bought me a ticket. I remember she came and picked me up, and we went to Heathrow. Was it Heathrow or Gatwick? I can't remember which airport it was. And um, we had to stay overnight at a hotel. And then early in the morning, I ended up getting a plane and going straight to Las Vegas to go and live with my dad. And how was it living with your dad? Did you feel like you were able to bond with him at that point? Me and my dad, we, yeah, we, we've always been able to bond. There's always been that bond there for us. But... Um, because as like I said, it's because I was a teenager. I just, I lashed. I just, I just did what I normally always did. Cause that's how I dealt with emotions. 
you know what I mean? Because I didn't know any other way else of doing it, really. So um, I was running away again and started using substances in Vegas. So um, um, everything to get you counseling, some therapy. No, there was no counseling or therapy. I don't know because it like back in when when I was younger, there wasn't much like uh, mental health or anything awareness much back then. It's not as much as there is now. So I didn't really get the help that I needed when I was a kid, really. Okay. And so then what happened after? Last um, so I was going to a, um, a high school in um, Vegas, and um, <clears throat> I ended up getting involved with the wrong crowd. And um, so I ended up getting involved with the wrong crowd and then taken – well, I got woken up at 4 o'clock in the morning and um, – Woken up by a man and a woman, large people at the end of my bed, and um, I could see my dad was standing behind them with tears down his eyes. And um, yeah, they uh, restrained me. They hang like and they handcuffed me. They also took away my um, shoelaces and out of my shoes. Oh my god! And then they both. I was screaming. I was kicking. I was like, "You're not taking me!" I was. I literally I remember grabbing my covers as well and getting in the corner, just trying to wrap my covers around me so they couldn't get hold of me. And they ended up because they were just so much bigger than me. They just ended up just grabbing me, one on each end, and just picking me up. And like I was pushing my feet against the car. I remember trying to push them everything away, and they were just shoved me in the car. Oh and my- then that was it. That was the last time I saw my dad. Oh. Oh. Yeah. And did you get a crime? I mean, I know you, said, but did you have a misdemeanor? Did you have a crime? No. no. And yet they took it upon themselves to handcuff you and throw you yeah. in the car with no regard. Yeah. And off you went to the airport. Um, did you try to escape out of the car? Or no, I. They were. They had the car doors were locked on the inside, and then I had one of them sitting inside the back with me, and then one of them was sitting in the front of the driver's seat. That's awful. So you couldn't escape, and then when you get to the airport, then what happens? Uh, police officers with guns were escorting me. Um, so I was, yeah. They so basically the escalators, and there was a stairs in the middle, and they were walking next to me when I was um. Uh, going up and da- down the escalator, and they were um, like escorting me to the uh, um, airplane. I can see if you're a criminal, but you're not even a criminal, and police are escorting you with these people like, transporting children from a home, you know, to, yeah. to another state. Oh, um, I was only 13 years old as well, so oh, it's just okay. like I was 13 when this happened, yeah. That's very traumatizing. Yeah, so I got on. Um, I got onto the plane. They sat on either side of me, and um, they were trying to make talk with me, but I just wasn't talking to them. They were just trying to say to me that I'm going to a better place. I'll be safe there. Just normal things, but I just wasn't replying back to them. I was just more in shock more than anything, really. Yeah. Um, so uh, they took me uh, on an airplane to Missouri. Um, we got um, a car and then we drove and um, I remember um, driving and that's when I first saw fireflies. You yeah, don't I get fireflies, fireflies in England. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, we saw the fireflies and I was, it was just pitch black darkness. And I remember pulling up to this house and um, answered the door. Um, he had a cowboy hat and cowboy boots and a gun on gun on his um, belt buckle thingy at the side and um, I thought it was in a movie to be honest, I didn't think in England you don't get cowboys so I just thought like this is this. I really honestly thought it was like a movie or a dream or something, I just couldn't get my head around it really right. and he's um, welcomed me into the office and then he sat he sat me down <laughs> older was in there as well and um, they were telling me the rules and that's, circle of hope. that's his wife. Yeah, that's his um, wife. Mister. He was so he sat me down. So we sat down and we, he told me the rules. So basically, the shirt color system. 
Uh, it must might have changed by now, but when I was in there, um, there was orange shirts, um, orange shirts, which is the new status. So that basically you get a buddy. Chanel, when you first got into this compound, did they go through all of your items? Did you have to strip, take a shower? What what happened? Did they give you lice medicated shampoo? What was the drill? What happened? So uh, they took me down the hallway and. Um, uh, basically, I had to strip in front of them, so I'd take all my clothes off, turn around, so they could see if I had any tattoos, if I was hiding any drugs. Oh um, yeah, so they um, they had to uh, they did all that, and then that's when they gave me the uniform. They also gave me like shampoos, conditioners, a towel, and um, later on they gave me church clothes. But, yeah, so I had to um, do all that, and then that's when he uh, gave me my buddy and took me down to the office and gave me who my guide was. And your guide was, how old was your guide? It's a, it's a student, right? Yeah, I believe she's the same age as me. Um, so you have to follow another student, uh, not staff, another student behind them, three feet behind. And what happens if you get out of, out of line? You get tackled. Tackled? Restrained. Yeah, restrained. Tackle to the ground, call brother house, and you'll get restrained. Awful, awful. Have you ever witnessed the owner or anybody else throwing a girl down, slamming them to the ground? Slam. Yes, that's for that's the start to restrain. You slam them that's onto the floor, start. grab the back of the neck, and you slam. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he'll deal with it on any matter that how he wants to deal with it. It's different for every person. And is he putting pressure points? On pressure points, yes. Oh. That's so when he, so they grab, restraining is uh, when you grab from the back of your neck, you get shoved onto your floor, and um, he's pressing the pressure points on the back of your neck here, and then he gets one girl um, pressing the pressure points here and up here. So that's that's uh, one side when you're lying flat on the floor, so your face is facing down, and then another girl on the opposite side. And then there's pressure points on the back of your knees. And that's when they put, so he taught us to clench our fists like this and then push down with all our weights using these bits here on the pressure yeah, points. Do that. I'm a massage therapist. If you put pressure to the back of your knee, you can cause some serious damage. So were these girls screaming bloody murder throughout your stay? Yeah, they're screaming, please stop. This hurts. I lost feeling in my in my fingers for about three days because I got restrained for 45 minutes because I didn't want to read the Bible. I had enough of it. You didn't want to read the Bible? Yeah. So there's no free will there? No free no. will about God in this place? That's awful. So you're punished if you just don't do what they say. It's, it's awful. Yeah. You should be able to have freedom of religion. And Definitely. as a even as a Christian, you should be able to have free will. Otherwise, what's the point? Um, yeah. Completely against what God wants, actually. Um, but that's a whole different song and dance. Chanel, 45 minutes is a long time to be restrained. So you're screaming bloody murder for 45 minutes? Yes. Oh. I was just asking to get off me. Please, can you get off me? I was screaming. Um... And all because we get off. want to read the Bible. It's because I didn't want to read it. I just had enough of reading it. You know what I mean? I just didn't. I've never really, I've never read the King James Version ever before. Like my family, they say they're Catholics, but we didn't really practice it. It was just because of history of our family. You know what I mean? So um, I've never really practiced it. I went to church a few times, but I never, and, uh, and I didn't really understand the Bible. So I was only 13 years old. You know what I mean? Right. And I didn't really understand the Bible. But they are pulling scripture out and abusing these kids. So now you're having an association of child abuse and the Bible. Yeah. So you probably just had enough of it at that point. Yeah. I, I bet that was the case. But, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Um, okay, so you get there. You know about the restraining. They're telling you the rules. Um, what about so Rules. So basically, so um, the higher the shirt color, it's like um, military. It's from the Marines. So he was very military um, like minded. So the higher the shirt color, the more privileges you get. So from so it goes 
orange shirt, um, yellow shirt, pink shirt, green shirt, um, purple shirt, and red shirt. But the lowest color is a black shirt. And he said they were only on this earth to work, breathe, eat if they were lucky, sleep, and read the Bible. Eat if they were lucky. So he was starving people in this camp. If a punishment, like if, if people like weren't, um, if they just, it depends on the girl, it depends on the circumstance. But yeah, some girls he did like say like if you you wouldn't be allowed to eat if you're not if you're not um, doing the rules right. Okay. Was he also starving girls that he deemed overweight? Yes, I was on because when I went that got there, um, they we get weighed every morning. And I wasn't at the weight that they wanted me to be for my height. So um, I got put on half portions. So half portions, I had to drink three glasses of water, um, three glasses of water before each meal. And I got half the portions that everybody else got. That's awful. So they were trying to fill you up on water and now you have half the portions. So there was but exercise, a lot uh, extreme exercise and yeah. hard labor. And half yeah. the food. Okay. I did. Um, I think I, I don't know how to do it in American size. But I think I was like 140 pounds okay. when I was there. And then when I left, I think I was 110. Wow. So you lost yeah. a lot of, of weight in a short amount of time, would you say? Yeah. So rapid weight loss can cause health problems. Yes. Um, they don't seem to care about that. Um, did you receive any medical attention while you were there? Could um, girls receive a, a medical attention? Well, I was never on any medication or anything. Okay. But um, when, basically, when I was, uh, I think it was an orange shirt when I first got there, I know quite a lot about animals because I've worked with horses and I've worked with it previous before I moved there. I did own a horse and I had, I've known lots about them. And um, we were inside the pen, and there was this horse that was, he wasn't broken. And it was just, I remember it being stormy. And um, because I'm not allowed to say anything unless it's important, my guide was telling me, the guide is the person that was, um, I'm not allowed to be more than three feet away from, she was telling me that I needed to get in there and get the, the horse out. And I wanted to try and tell her this is really dangerous, it's not safe. And but I couldn't because I was a, a lower shirt color. Oh my god! And um, I was trying to tell her that this is not the way to do it because we're scaring him. So we need to try and do it a safer way. And but she kept saying you need to go in there or you're going to give me push. I'm going to get push ups. Oh my god! So um, so basically, um, I did what she said. I've grabbed hold of him and he's reared up. And he's just got away and I've got bad knees and I fell to the ground because I've got torn ligaments in my kneecaps and I fell to the ground oh, no. and um, my knee swelled up. I couldn't walk on my knee. So um, he drove his truck to come and get me and then um, they did call an ambulance to come and get But I was, I was very watched when I was at the hospital didn't leave my side at all you could not tell them that they're abusing you in there at all yeah and you would be afraid anything. you would be punished further and if you thought your life was a living hell now it would be far worse if you opened your mouth is that correct yes that's correct okay um i just wanted to talk about the lack of communication and how this is set up i just want to tell the audience and reiterate that you couldn't talk to a buddy. So it was a girl that was over you that told you to get into the pen. Otherwise, you were going to get a punishment, which are pushing. Yeah. Okay. Um, you felt like you couldn't speak with her because of how they designed the program with the whole hierarchy level. Yes. Um, it's ridiculous how you cannot communicate with other people without, without getting punished. And now there's child endangerment because of it. Yeah. yeah. So child endangerment, a lot, um, also child neglect, um, and the list goes on. You're lucky that you're yeah. able to get medical attention because yeah. I've heard that 95% of the girls in there do not get medical attention. 
Yeah, yeah. no, I do. Um, uh, I, think I think it's, it's the it's fact that I couldn't actually walk. I literally, I could not, I, my knee had swell and swelled up really big. I could not walk at all. So oh. I think that's the only reason why, because I, I don't know if it was broke. I didn't know at the time if it was broken or what. It was just, I could not, I could not put any weight onto it at all. Oh my God. And so what did they say? They told you that you couldn't walk on it for a certain amount of time to heal? But then, yeah, it was, um, I think they said about five days. Um, I think it was about five days, I think. I can't remember. But um, I, I was only uh, for like 24 hours. I was there. Then they told me that I, could, I had to get up and start working again. Oh my God. After 24 hours? Did they not listen? Yeah. Did they not hear what the doctor suggested? Were they not? In the, they were in the same room as you were. Yeah, and they just thought that because I was sitting upstairs. They had a sofa upstairs, and I was sitting up there. But after twenty four hours, they're like, "Okay, it's, it looks like you're better, so you can start, um, uh, start working again." Oh my god, that's awful! And so now you're in pain, right? While you're yeah, I do. So I, I suffer with my legs quite badly. My knees. It's always been that way since. So it got a bit. It got worse when I was at Circle of Hope because I did hurt my knee a few times. But after that first time, because they knew it wasn't as bad as it, they thought it was when it first happened, they just they didn't really take any notice after that. Oh no! So they thought you were. Yeah. And after that, if you complained or you just yeah, never... they just thought I was just complaining. They just thought I was probably trying to get out of work. I don't know. So oh. perhaps maybe if you rested and let it heal for those five days, you wouldn't have this chronic pain that you suffer with. Yeah. That's awful. Um, can you tell me about the room of isolation? Was there a room of isolation during the time that you were there? No, there was no room of isolation. And the only punishment was like exercises, punishment, push-ups, restraints, um, forcing girls to eat loads of food until they threw up. Um, Force to eat their own vomit? Yeah, and then also to eat their own vomit, vomit yeah, because they puked inside the bowl. So awful. he said, you've got to eat everything inside the bowl. That's awful. Awful. I mean, this do we even do this in our prison system? Uh, it's just despicable. Um, could you call 911 at any given time in this place? No. We weren't allowed near no phone. Can it, <laughs> could a parent come at any given time at the drop of a hat at this place? No. No. So you, permission held, for you were held captive, pretty much. Yes. Place. Um, okay, so uh, can you tell me about the wall? Uh, yes, uh, the wall. So that's a punishment, uh, one of the punishments that Bob House gives. Some girls um, can be put onto the wall for about a month. Other girls could get put on the wall for like five, six months. That means you've got to stand there. Um, facing the wall with your hands behind your back if you're not reading the Bible. You have to, you're not allowed to do nothing. You're not even allowed to itch or you're not allowed to move unless you raise your hands. You've got to eat on the wall. You read your Bible on the wall. Um, I think you're even last in showers at one point. Like when I was there, you were like last for everything. You were last on the totem pole to take a shower. Um, yeah. Considered an untouchable, meaning um, did other girls snoot their nose at you because you were on? Yes, the, uh, you were yes. treated differently. Anybody that brother had, is picking on that week, or whoever he's picking on that day, a lot of the higher shirts would be picking, like the higher shirts would be picking on that person. So they're because at the end, yeah, sure they were a target because it was in that place. It's more like. You've got to look out for yourself. You don't know who you can trust. You don't know what to do. You don't know. It's 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 all about pleasing. So you can get out of there. That's what we wanted to aim for: was to get out of there. We wanted to have our visits. We wanted to have our phone calls. So that's what we had to do. So whoever was picking on that week, we had to punish those girls as well. We had to pick on them. Oh no! Um, Every little thing they did. Would, uh, back to the wall, would you say that they weren't getting an education while they were on the wall? So Well, they couldn't do schoolwork on the they wall. They couldn't do schoolwork. Okay, so I understand no. the lack of schoolwork anyway. Yeah. Normal, on a normal basis. But now, 
school is out of the question altogether. Is that correct? Yes. But they're allowed to continue to be slaves while they're on the wall. So Yeah, they're mainly the so the black shirts and the people on the wall and um yeah, it was mainly black shirts and the people on the wall. They would be mainly working outside most of the time. They would be the first ones, and then it would go yellow shirts. Then it would so it would go up. It would go up, and then those people, whoever those lower shirts were, they would be the first ones that would have to go outside and work. So if I want to survive in this program, I better climb up the ladder quick. So that's what I did. I won't get picked on, and that's what you did. So tell me, while you were on a higher level. Did you ever have to restrain another girl? Did you have to bully another girl? What was the yeah? What was the process? So um, I've always got me to restrain people. Um, he um, as I was a higher shirt. Yes, um, I did enforce the rules, and I and I was I was horrible most of the time. But I was just at the end. I was just. I was. I feel really bad now. I talk to everybody now about it. You know what I mean. But um, we just had to do what we had to do. We all know that as a group, us circle right. folk girls, we we've all bonded quite well after all this because we knew what what was going on in that place was wrong, right. and we knew that we didn't. That wasn't actually us. That wasn't right. actually. It, we were like robots. You know what I mean. There was no souls in us we couldn't do any no there was souls but we couldn't exactly I know like you're... express our feelings or anything like that so we're just all robots but now we're all closer than ever oh and and you're absolutely right I, I felt like my soul was taken when you can't make a decision on your own when you're being yeah. to abuse another child um, that's child abuse. When you tell another child to abuse another child so you can survive and not get picked on and not get bullied, that's child. It's child abuse. Yeah. It, it is child abuse. There's no other way around it. Um, they are in the wrong for doing that. To, put, uh, to orchestrate something so evil like that. Uh, not only that, but as a survivor, now you have to live with the guilt. All these girls that did that because they were trying to survive, their guilt and shame, it's hor horrifying that yeah. this continues to go on in the United States. Did you ever see anybody get their face shoved in poop? Yes, um, outside, I got their, um, a girl got um, thrown onto the floor uh, before she was getting strained and got shoved in chicken poop. Oh my god, that's awful! What is going on there with them shoving girls on the ground, and then worse, and beating yeah, them? Yeah, we've been inside a chicken coop as well. When it's oh, it's vile. It's just smelting there. It was so horrible. Um, because uh, there was like a pen. So like when it's when it's like on a hot day, it just it's just vile inside the chicken coop. Vile. It's awful, awful what they yeah. do girls at this camp um what was what if you couldn't do the exercise properly what were the repercussions restrained uh shouted at um brother house would come straight up to like you would come like straight up to your face he'd be screaming in your face and you just you'll be crying you wouldn't you just would keep try and keep on going but sometimes you just couldn't and he would just probably, he would just restrain you. That's awful. Awful. Um, uh, what about bathroom breaks? Were, were there designated bathroom breaks in this place? So uh, there was an incident that happened when I was there. Um, so basically every, um, every hour was a bathroom break. So you're allowed to have a bathroom break every hour. This is when I was there, so it might change by then. Okay. But it was uh, every hour. Um, so... If you, uh, there's this one girl, she kept on asking to go to the toilet and thought that she was only doing it to get out of work. Um, so um, he got brought her into the office and made her drink uh, pitchers of, um, of water while jogging on the spot. Oh, my God. Um, she couldn't hold it in and she peed herself and then she got restrained. So you force a child to drink an absurd amount of water and they urinate yeah. on them. 
yourself and now you're going to restrain him as a punishment for that. Yeah. That's just absolute torture and humiliation. And the list goes on. Um, I still hear the screams. I can still oh, hear the screams in my head time to time. I'm so sorry. That's awful. Um, was there a fence around this place? No. No. But you couldn't get out. You were watched. If you were a lower shirt, you, you had to walk around and freeze. So a higher shirt color was allowed two lower shirt colors. So that's pink shirts and higher. That's when I was there. There was pink shirts and higher that were allowed to walk around in groups of three. But red shirts and green, uh, red shirts and uh, purple shirts were allowed to walk around by themselves. Okay, so the higher you go, the more trusted you are. And yeah. all these girls, <coughs> like the staffs, they were orchestrating abuse from the, the girls in the school to abuse other girls and to be the lookout. So they were like policing all these girls in the camp. Is that correct? Yeah. So like if we were working outside, so we would have to like, if we were picking weeds, if you're picking weeds, you're not allowed, you're out, you've got a crouch. You're not allowed to put your knees or anything on the floor. We could be doing that for hours, just picking That's weeds awesome. out of the weeds out of the garden. So there'll be the garden, the, the, um, the way that we grew our vegetables and um, there'll be like shirt colors, higher shirt colors surrounding them with the lower shirt colors in the middle. Did you ever get paid for doing the weeds, the laundry, any of the hard labor that they had you do outside, working on a church, no. construction? No. So slavery. Uh, we can't even call this a sweatshop because at least in a sweatshop, you get paid. At least prisoners... Yeah, yeah make about, what, 10 to $35 a month. I really don't know what the going rate is in prison. But the point is they make money, some money. And you were just flat-out slaves, slaves. Because who the hell would want to volunteer for this ministry? Well, that was like the main um, – that was like working outside, so we'd have to pick up rocks that were a certain size for no reason, putting them inside the wheelbarrow. Um, there was like we had to build uh, fences, uh, like for the cows. We had to build those. We had to. It was just like picking up metal because the person that owned it before had like this huge metal, um, metal um, like pile of stuff. And we had to pick up the rest of the metal around because there was there was a big land. There was like woods and everything. So we used to have to go all through there picking up stuff and taking it back. Did you have um, any work gloves while you were doing this? Yes, we had work gloves. Work gloves, okay. We had to come in for like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, we got 10 minutes to eat our food. If you didn't eat your food in 10 minutes, you would get it cold the next day. Oh, my God. Next, not day, next next meal, sorry. Not next day, next meal. No, you could. Um, so we get 10 minutes to do that. Um, we'd have to say Bible verses. We had to learn Bible verses. I still remember Bible verses now. Um, before breakfast, lunch, and dinner as well. Let's go back to the meals. So let's say I didn't eat my meal in the time frame that they had for me, which was ten minutes. Yeah. It goes to the next day. What if I didn't eat that because it was you just keep on going until you magic. finished it. You keep on going, so it just keeps yeah. rolling over, rolling, rolling over. over. If it goes, if it goes a bit funny. He'll just give you like oatmeal um, that's plain with nothing in it. Okay, how long of a wait do I have for oatmeal? Four more meals, or you're it not. It depends on it depends on the food. So it depends on brother. What he wanted to do it's 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 right. different for every girl. Um, it's different. It's, he got to pick and choose who he, who he, what punishments and everything that went on with the girls. It's awful. Just awful. Um, did he pray before meals? Yes. He did, before every meal? Yeah. So you're hearing prayer, you're hearing screams, you're hearing Bible verses, you're hearing God, Jesus, and you're hearing torture. What kind of associations yeah. do you have right now with that? Is it triggered to Oh, talk? it triggers. Yeah, it's a trigger. Oh, it is. 
That's awful. Uh, so I was watching, I was trying to watch that um, video of Joy, George Floyd the other day. Right. Uh, when he was getting restrained. I couldn't even watch it. I had to switch it off because of the screams because it was reminding me of Circle of Hope. Um, so I, I couldn't watch it, so I had to switch it off. I want America to really listen to what you just said right now, to really pay attention because this school is open today and no one is doing anything about it and turning a blind eye. So they're restraining girls and there's child endangerment um, there's allegations of rape and the list goes on starvation and yet nothing is happening. Absolutely. I'm very passionate as well about it. I'm not going to stop until this place is shut down and the other places that are all open over America. Um, no teenagers should be able to be put through what us as teenagers have been put through. It's not fair. It's, it destroys us and it's, it's given us mental health in the long run, you know what I mean? PTSD, anxiety, depression, I agree. you can name it, all over. It's just and it's, it's sickening that these places are open and, and it's being allowed. With Amanda Householder really exposing this, and she has 100,000 plus followers, they are asking questions, is this place open? How could this happen? How can people get away with this? They're... They don't realize it's just one of many, one of many, and this is a billion dollar industry. Chanel, were you made to wear the same clothes every day with the exception of Sunday when the parents were coming for a visit? Um, were, were you working hard labor and then having to rotate those without doing laundry? What was going on with that? You got um, two sets two sets of work clothes um, for the week. So um, you, had to, you only got two sets for seven days. Um, well, the Sunday you wouldn't really count because we'd be at church, so we'd be wearing our church outfit. Um, so you would have to wear two, two sets for six days. Um, and, um, yeah, we'd be caked in. It would be dirty. They don't, didn't get washed. They were... They were just scruffy clothes. They would, they would, I wouldn't even, you know what I mean? I don't think even homeless people are that, <laughs> that, that are better dressed than us. You know what I mean? At that point, really. You can wear those clothes to school too? Yeah. They what? Were, they were just our everyday clothes. So, so here you are in school and the girls are rotating these dirty clothes from hell. And they're also laundry helpers too. And they're doing laundry every day. So what are yeah. they? The sheets, the towels. Yeah, they had like yeah. a um, like a, uh, a system. So on like Mondays you would wash this, like the sheets. On Tuesday you would do like rags. Wednesday you would do. I don't know. I can't remember the exact order, but it was just like then Wednesday you'd be doing some uh, the clothes. Then you'll be doing underwears and bras. It would just depend on um, every day. It would be just something different that you'll be washing. Five minute showers that we got. Five minute showers. Did you ever witness anybody getting a cold shower as a punishment? So basically, you get a five minute shower. That's getting in, getting undressed, getting in the shower, getting yourself sh showered, and then getting out of the shower, getting dressed all in five minutes. What? If you, yeah, if you didn't um, get done in five minutes, then you'd get a cold shower for the next day and you'd get push ups. Oh, my God. And so are they forced? What if I didn't want to be underneath the coal because it was too cold? Did you, they got, you got forced. You had to scrub. I remember um, Brock standing in the, he was He had other girls standing what? in there with him. Wait, he had wait. to say. He, he was there? Yeah. So basically when she got undressed and then she got inside the shower, he closed the curtain. Uh, and, he, and he came in and he was standing there making sure this girl was scrubbing. So he's in the shower room with these girls that are being punished to make sure that they're taking a cold shower. Yeah. Unbelievable. Speaking of which, I would like to go into, have you ever witnessed him getting a massage? On the head while, the, while he was watching TV. While he was watching TV. Was it, was it ordered? 
Did he order yes, these? Yes, ordered. He used to call uh, the girl up by the um, intercom and say, can you come upstairs? And she would go upstairs and she would be up there for most of the night before bedtime. Oh, my and God. And she would be massage, sitting there massaging his Slaves head. to this man. And did you ever witness anything else? Was it multiple girls that were doing it or was it just one? It was just one, this one girl. That was chosen. There was always yeah, there was one girl that was chosen, yeah. Okay, it seems to be... When when, when did you attend the school? In 2000... 2006 to 2010. Wow. You were in there that long? That's awful. Awful. I did go home halfway between... I can't remember what dates I went home, but I did go home uh, for about two, three months, and then I got That's taken not back the same again. How did you not just jump out of the car? I Knowing tried, but there was just, it was oh. locked. Oh, my God. So you were kidnapped again by these people. Yeah, so but basically when I left, oh, when I was halfway through, uh found me a church to go to. Um, and uh, so I had to attend a church that was, that the pastor actually knew. And, um, and the conditions of me leaving is basically not go back to my old ways. Otherwise, I'd come back. And obviously, I went back. I didn't really. I was too scared to tell my dad anything of what was going on, really, because I didn't know what would happen if I would get sent back or not. And then oh, no. I just ended up spiraling out of control again. I was good for a bit, and I just spiraled out of control again because I could. I just. I couldn't. When I got into the world, I just couldn't deal with emotions no so I, I just really battle with emotions so um yeah so I left out again you were probably self-medicating to cope with the aftermath of yeah you in this place yeah and, and then I got woken up I think I, I want to say I was 16 but I can't to time for me I can't remember because it was such a short period it was only like three months I was out and then I got taken back oh no I'm so sorry and of course, on the brainwashed mode, where you felt like you couldn't open your mouth while you were on break, on a break for three months trying to fit into society. So I can't, it, it's just so hard to fit into society after going through something like that. I still battle with it now. So like if I got like a job, I did do some waitressing for a bit. And I have to make sure I'm doing everything that the boss tells me because I think I'm going to get into serious trouble. Oh. So I've just, I still battle with bits and pieces now and again. <clears throat> I do get like flashbacks and I get like triggers and stuff. Smells. If I smell, uh, we used to spray this um, thing on the horses. It was like vinegar and um, like apple cider vinegar or vinegar. It's like a vinegary smell. We used to keep the flies off. If I smell that, it takes me straight back there as well. Oh my gosh! So triggers to trauma. So here you are. You you're kidnapped again. You're going back um, for the second time around. That's got to be hard. Yeah. You were respected a little bit more before you left, and now yeah, you have to start all over again. Yeah, stuff over again. again. That's awful. So um, I didn't get put into an orange shirt at that time, though. I got put into um, a yellow shirt. So you moved because or no, it's because um because I wasn't um an orange shirt is the new girl status and because I already knew the rules, right. I just got put straight into a yellow shirt. Got it. Okay, so that's one step above the orange. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, I'm learning the hierarchy here. <laughs> um, did it not take you long to get, climb back mm. up? No, it didn't. Because I knew what I, what I was expecting this time, so I knew what I was going into. So. Um, I did get up the shirt colors system quite quickly. Um, uh, yeah, so I did get up there quite quickly. It just, he just wasn't happy that I had to come back, but it is what it is. Back to your father and you, you going back home for that short amount of time. I just want to get into your head. I just want to get, I want to convey this to the audience about brainwashing. Were you afraid that he wouldn't believe you if you told him the truth? Were you afraid of the repercussions? Did you think it was still a good program and it was the best thing that happened to you because you felt like you were going down the wrong path? What was going through your mind not to say anything? 
Uh, lots of things, really. Um, at the time, I, I thought I was when I when I first left. Um, I thought I was saved. So because I was brainwashed to think that if you weren't saved, sorry, um, if you weren't saved, you were going to hell. Right. So I did believe that I was saved when I left. Um, but as the time went on and I was there after the days, I started realizing that this was a load of bollocks. Um, but I didn't want to talk to my dad about it because I didn't want, at the time, my dad thought he was thought quite highly because he was, he was, he thought he'd saved me, you know what I mean? Like he'd, he'd made me into a different person. So I didn't want to take that away from my dad because I wanted my dad to know that I was all right, I guess. So I was just a bit worried about saying stuff, really. I just blocked a lot of it out. I just didn't really I didn't really want to talk about it. I didn't talk about it for years. And I've only spoken to my dad properly about it recently, really. Oh, my goodness. That's a long time, Chanel. Um, basically, would you, is it fair to say that these programs just stuff everything down deep inside? And it suppresses everything. It oppresses everything that you are. Yeah. And you have an identity crisis. Um, you just shove all these emotions down and you're just ordered. You're a robot. And then finally, yeah. finally, when it comes to the surface, I'm sure there was a big explosion. Okay. Yes, it was definitely, well, yeah, it was definitely a Big exposure. There was punishments also about the girls getting their hair cut off. I don't know if I've hair mentioned cut that. Some awful. Them. So basically, um, there was a couple of girls, and like one of them would play with her hair, or they would be looking in the mirror, or something like that. And he said, "You're meant to be praising God, not yourself." So he cut their hair off. That's awful. What a runaway status, robe status. Um, so basically, if you've been thought about, if you were going to be running away, uh, he would put you in a robe with no clothes underneath, with shoes that are too big for you, with oh no God. tongues or shoelaces in, um, and you would basically be working. And one time it was really snowing. I think it was an ice storm or something was coming on. And um, one of the girls that was uh, was there, she ended up, she was working outside and she ended up getting frostbite. In her foot, her whole foot went black, and I don't think she got any medical attention for it. But That's awful! And no one pointed out that they should take him to, they should take this child to the doctor or these children. That no, she didn't get taken. She didn't. And so she's screaming. She's in pain. Yeah. Law, and you're listening. She'll get forced to work still. <gasps> And it's still cold outside, so she's still it's forced freezing, to work I remember. with frostbite. Oh, that's awful, awful. So you were lucky you went to the doctor when yeah. you got out, knocked down by the horse. You were lucky yeah. because here's this child with frostbite. Were there two kids with frostbite or one, one of the girls? Just one of them had frostbite. That's awful. And the other one was made to work out, and she yeah. just escaped frostbite. Um, did, did you have problems going to sleep, um, menstrual cycle? How was your menstrual cycle? Was it delayed? I didn't, I didn't have a period the whole time I was there. Oh, my God. So definitely. Four years. I'm sorry? For four years, I didn't have a period. Oh, my God. Yeah, I didn't have no period. And then when you got out of this place, you were regular again? Yeah, I started becoming regular, yeah. And that's how much... It's the... You know, I was trying to say it was the hormones in the uh, the food that we got because we didn't buy get food from the supermarket. We got fresh meats. That's the reason why we didn't get our periods. But then later on, I found it out it was because of stress, but that's what says what the reason is. Unbelievable. And, and things were just normal when you got out of there. Imagine that. Chanel, let's talk about the preaching that was going on of the owner of this camp for girls called the Circle of Hope Girls Ranch located in Missouri. I understand he's not a preacher per se. Yeah. To Amanda. 
householder. Um, but he's a, a leader of the church. He's leading the church. And he's leading the church astray. He's leading his flock astray. And as a Christian, you should be really upset about the following. Okay, Does he ever talk about how a woman dresses, how their demeanor is, how they conduct themselves? With, are they taking on the responsibility of rape by their actions? So basically, if you women are not allowed to wear um, uh, pants, we call them jeans um, in England, but not allowed to wear pants uh, because uh, a man can picture a woman naked. So that is worldly. So that and because um, men shouldn't be able to picture women naked. So basically, he's saying that. Um, it's our own fault if we're dressed up like that. So if we get, like, touched up or anything like that, it's not the man's fault because we shouldn't be wearing pants. So in other words, if a man gets aroused and yeah. decides to rape a woman, it's because of their demeanor, the way they conduct themselves, how they dress, how they talk, how they smell. Yeah. Does he have a Bible open while he's um, talking about this? Pulling scripture? Um, no matter what verse it was. Did he have the Bible open while yeah. he was talking about this? He did. Yeah. Okay, that's all I need to know. You don't have to pull out verses. I know in Deut I know in my school they use Deuteronomy. Um, a men should wear men's apparel, women should wear women's apparel, and something to that effect. And I'll have the scripture in, in a ticker going across. But that was yeah. in school, which is a sister program to yours. By the way, this is a Lester Roloff school, for those that don't know. Alester Roloff is the mastermind behind these cults. He started a school called the Rebecca Home for Girls in 1968. And all of these followers, such as the owner of your school, the owner of the school that I was locked into, um, New Bethany, Victory Christian Academy, the Hefts of the House, the Rebecca Home for Girls, and the Circle of Hope Girls Ranch located in Missouri. They are all less yeah. homes. I just wanted to give the audience some history on it. Um, go ahead. Uh, it was an agape one as well. Agape. So that is a Lester Roloff home as well. Wow. Is that and is that still open today? Yes, that's still open as well. Exactly. Uh, used to work there before he came to Circle of Hope and made that, Circle of Hope. Is that a boys' home? Yeah, that's an old boys' one. It's an all-boys home called the Cafe, and that's located also in Missouri? Yes. It's Stockton. located in Missouri. Still wide open today, folks. So, I mean, this is an epidemic that's happening in our country. We're just touching on Agape and Circle of Hope right now. It's, it's, oh, there are over 100,000 reform schools, conversion therapies, boot camps for kids, wilderness camps, and the list goes on. Rehabilitation programs, straight programs. They're abusing our children, and no one is doing anything about it. Um, apparently, they, it says on their tax records, apparently they spend 10 grand a year on school uniform, um, on the uniform that we're meant to be wearing there, but we never got any new uniform. It was all handy downs. So that's oh what it says God. on their tax records that they that they spend ten grand. Wow! So they're profiting an awful lot in this. I I understand that Amanda said they're profiting four hundred thousand dollars a year, and they yeah. have eight hundred thousand in assets. Eight hundred thousand in assets. Four hundred thousand. Profit. It's a non-profit organization. They're tax exempt. Tax exempt and they're abusing children. Still open today. Um, Have you ever tried to run away from this place, Chanel? Yes, um, I ran away in uh, 2010. How did you how did you end up running? How did you get out of this place? That's crazy. I don't know how you did it. So basically, um, because I got up the shirt colour system, I was able to walk around by myself. Um, the day that I ran, at the time, there was two houses. So there was Circle of Hope, and then down the road, they were renting another place. Uh, so they had half the girls in one of the properties and half the girls in the other property. And um, so that 
were living at the other property. And I was as the high shirt and another staff member. We were staying at the other and the other one. And um, I was in charge of all the animals, and I was also in charge of food as well at one point, cooking as well. And um, I don't think I can't remember exactly what I got told off for. I just rem- I remember getting called over there, and I remember the. F- on my feeling and I was like I actually this was an accident like I didn't actually mean to do what I did and um he was telling me that I was going to be a black shirt by the end of the week when he says that you are going to be a black shirt by the end of the week because oh. that's when you do one thing wrong he just picks and picks and picks and picks on you until you just break down really oh, no. so um I was like, the kid, everyone, the kids, the girls were getting ready for church. And I went to go in, because I was in charge of the outdoors, I went to go and take the wheelbarrow across the road to put um, the wheelbarrow back. And I remember standing there and I was looking at the woods and I was like, should I run or should I not? Should I run? Should I not? It wasn't even planned. I just literally ran into those woods. So, and I was just like, oh, I'm just going to do it. So I ran into the woods and I hid in a ditch. I could see I could see the road and everything still. And I saw driving past with his son in the car as well, driving past me. Oh, my I God. So, I was like, but I didn't want to move because I wanted to make sure they were gone by the time. So Because I, I knew if I just started running, they would have just caught up with me. It was so smart of you, Chanel, to, to hide in a ditch as opposed to running out in the middle of the street. And then they would catch you. So then when you're yeah. scared, you're hiding. So um, it started getting dark, so um, I just started running. I just remember running for ages and coming to, like, a road, and I just started putting my finger up. Uh, Somebody picked me up, and it was a guy, and he picked me up. He took me to go get some pizza uh, from one of the gas stations because you've got, like, pizza and stuff in there. So so then I told him the story because I didn't want to exactly say that I was running away from – circle of hope or anything and I ran away I think it was like the 22nd or 23rd of April so it was just after the 20th the 20th of April's national high day so I decided to tell them that I went out I'm from Vegas um I came out with my friends to go on a messy one and uh we lost each other and now I can't get back to Vegas and I don't know I don't have no phone I've lost everything I just need to get back to Vegas. That was so smart. But at the same token, so dangerous because you're hitchhiking. Anything to (laughs) you. They took me to uh, his his wife's house where he met his kids and everything. And then he said goodbye to them. Then we got into the, uh, the car again. He then picked somebody up. And then they started doing some weird stuff in the front car seat. I was just sitting there. I was just so glad to be out of Circle of Hope. Right. So um, they drove me all the way to um, Springfield, Missouri. And then they dropped me off by the McDonald's. It was Burger King. I think it was McDonald's, I think it was. And I was. it started raining. I just remember crying. I was just like, "Oh my, what am I doing?" I was like, "I'm so." I was. I was mixed emotions again. I was scared, but I was happy. And I was just like crying my eyes out. And um, some guy drove pa- past me, and he was like, "You're right." And I told him the same story again. And he was like, "Okay." And so he took me back to his house. He bought me some cigarettes, and he bought me um, some food. He took me back to his house. He said, you can stay here for the night, and then I'll take you to the truck stop in the morning. Wow. So um, I stayed at his. And he was really nice. And in his house, that's just scary. But at this oh, point. I would have yeah. done anything. I think anything was better than going back yeah. to that place. So desperate not to go back to the hellhole. Go on. I'm sorry. So I stayed, so I stayed there, and he stayed on the sofa, and he let me have his bed. And... Um, The next morning, he took me to breakfast. Um, He gave me a bracelet and everything as well. It was really sweet. And then um, dropped me off at the truck stop. And then um, I was going around these all these big, huge, I think they're called Peter Belts, aren't they? Semi trucks. Yeah, is that what they're called? Semi trucks. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, yeah, so I was asking all of them. And also, I stood out because I was still wearing my long skirt and my 
my coloured shirt and everything. And um, I was asking all the truck drivers, is anyone driving towards Vegas? I'm stuck. I need a lift. I remember seeing one person then. I looked at them and I was just like, I recognised them. But I didn't oh. think anything of it. And um, finally, I found a, a truck guy that said, like, oh, yeah, you can come with me. I jumped in there. The next minute, the guy that I noticed earlier came running up to the truck saying, she, she, her name's Chanel. She's a runaway. Oh, no. I was, like, I was like, I ain't going back. It's not happening. I'm not doing that. I jumped out of that, and I ran down the motorway. Like, I remember there was this motorway, and I just oh, ran. Why? And then I jumped over a few fences and then went into a field. And then, again, I just hid in a ditch. And I think it was about for, like, a few hours. I just hid there. So I was just too scared. I didn't want to be caught by the police. Right. Oh, my God. That's um, awful. Yeah, so. So um, when next? You're in this ditch. It's hours. Go by. Then I get out and I go back onto the motorway. And then I put my thumb out again. Uh, it was a few people, and then uh, these two blokes picked me up. My, one of them was called—I can't remember the other guy's name. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say names, but um, I still remember they were really nice. Like they—they they really made me feel like welcome and everything. Cause they also loved my accent, so um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, they took me to Joplin, Missouri, I believe it was, and um, they took me there to meet their friends. So there was two other people that were there. Then um, they ended up taking me to Walmart, getting me new clothes. Uh, they bought me a bag. They bought, gave, got me food and munch. They got me um, cigarettes. Um, yeah, so they made me feel. And then we had a barbecue just before I left and everything. Cause they drove me up a bit further, but I just stayed there for a bit. I stayed the night, I believe, as well. Um, yeah, they were like, like really nice. I don't know. I feel like someone was watching over me this whole time. Yeah, somebody was whole watching time. for you big time because what are the yeah. odds? One after the other after the other to get to Vegas. Anything. Yeah. And it only takes one. And yeah. how could you have this much luck of not ha not being raped, not being assaulted, um, killed? Anything could have happened to you, Chanel. After they drove me up, I was also, I think I headed towards Texas, I think it was, because I did remember going through Albuquer Albuquerque, Texas. But at the same time, when I was doing that, there was also um, a murderer. He was murdering hitchhikers at the same oh, time. Good. I didn't find that out till later. But, um, yeah, there was a guy that was murdering women. Oh, my God. Um, Awful. Because um, America's Most Wanted was contacted as well. There was also an Amber Alert put out for me, and usually they don't let them, they don't put Amber Alerts out because. Um, but my stepmom she managed to um, get one out for me because I was a British citizen, and um, yeah, so they I managed to get one of those out for me. Wow. Um, yeah, so from there there was a lady that picked me up. She took me to her house as well. She was absolutely lovely. Um, she drove me. I can't remember all the like the states, what the names were. We just drove, and I remember seeing the country. America is so gorgeous. I just wanted to say that America, the country, is just absolutely. It's just a shame of what's happened in there. But it's such. I just remember seeing such beautiful scenery. It was a real brilliant experience, even though the circumstances. Right. But um, yeah, it was a really gorgeous country. I like. I did meet some weirdos on the way, but no, I never got harmed. Never, <laughs> nothing. No, but I, I can't get any weirder than the circle of hope oh, girls. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, though. <laughs> 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 the were just nothing compared to, you know. Yeah. That was a picnic compared to what goes on in this girl's home that's still open today. Okay. So then what happened? You're seeing the um, very. Your yeah, beautiful scenery. Uh, it took me about five days to get back to Vegas. Wow. Um, about five days it took me about to get back there. Um, I ended up going back, getting back there. Um, I can't remember the but I got back there and um, I ended up going back to my old area where all I knew my friends were. Uh, I was I slept on the street for a bit, um, and then um, 
some guy saw me sleeping on the streets and he said that I'd come back to his because they saw, like he said, said, you're a young woman, you shouldn't be sleeping on the streets and stuff. So he took me back to his house with his wife. Um, they did take photos because of like of my birthmark and stuff and take pictures of me. And then, um, and then when that went to sleep in their bed, they had like a baby monitor on me. But I was just so happy to be in the bed, to be honest. So I didn't really. I think it was more lucky. the fact they didn't want me stealing or anything. Right. You're lucky they didn't do anything to you. You're lucky. Yeah, I know. I know now. Yeah. Uh, so, but so, of course, desperation. Um, walking around the area, and I saw my dad's car come past because he's got like a distinctive car. And, um, yeah, he's pulled up. He's asked for him, all right. He's had tears down his eyes. You could see he was proper stressed and worried about me. And um, uh, he said that I, I, I said I wasn't going back. I said, I'm not going back there, Dad. It's not happening. I can't. And he's like, that's all right. We just got to take you to the police station to get the Amber Alert off and like, say that you're safe. And it was only, it was only a, not long till I turned to 18 anyway. So he was like, it's fine. He's like, your mum's flown over from England looking for you. Um, so you need to go and see her and then we'll have a catch up afterwards. Um, so my mum was staying in the hotel. Um, I found out that when my mum flew over, because my mum was, my mum didn't know I came into Circle of Hope. When I kept, first came to Circle of Hope, my mum didn't know about it. Because obviously she was in England she like she did come and visit me once and she did not like the place at all she uh went to the sheriff she told the sheriff the sheriff wasn't taking no notice of it brother house also wanted um a restraining order on her because she, oh she knew how the abuse was and she he threatened said to me that i'm gonna have to get a restraining order if she doesn't stop um oh he's not stupid he wants his paycheck and he doesn't want this place shut down so yes, definitely born in his side Yes, um, oh. my mum just knew she, there was something iffy about it. But she flew over from England when I ran away. She went back to Circle of Hope and um, she was arguing with her, saying where has she gone and everything. And um, she was also refusing to give my mum my passport. What? Uh, yeah, she was refusing to give my mum my passport as well. That's awful. What's yeah. That? In that, what's the point in that? Just to make her life a living hell? Yeah, they just didn't get along. They, my mum, because my mum knew, my mum knew it was a horrible place, but because I was in America, not in England, she couldn't do nothing about it. Just not to give your mother her her child's passport. I mean, yeah, awful. It's beyond unacceptable. I also found out that my stepmom also. Um, the day that I ran away, my stepmom rang. So Miss Steph rang my stepmom to say that I ran away. Uh, my stepmom got the Amber Alert out, and then uh, she rang back later um, to find out that brother was not looking for long, and he just went back to bed. And she was like, "You so you, my daughter was in your care, and she has run away, and you've only looked for a few hours or a couple of hours, and then you've just gone to bed." A 17-year-old British girl is running away in this country where she didn't know nothing about, and you, it's like you don't care. And she, that was the last time my stepmom actually spoke to me. Did you ever make a, a police report about what happened? So, uh, no. I've never made it. Uh, when I, after I left, so when I saw my mum for a bit, and then um, she went back home. We had a bit of an argument, but she went back home. Um, I stayed with my dad for a bit, not actually at his house. Um, I had like a room at, in somebody else's house, and I was working with him for a bit as well. Okay. Um, but like I said, I've blocked everything out. I just started going out of control again. I just started using. Okay. I couldn't cope with everything. Um, my dad, uh, so I ran away in April and then I left America in August the 27th, 2010. My dad bought me a ticket back to England because like I went to go and see if I could get my 
GED. Okay. I couldn't get my GED because I didn't have no qualifications, no nothing from Circle of Hope. Oh, so no. I had There's no transcripts. I want to make yeah, this to the yeah, audience. No transcripts, yeah. That, no. I didn't know what the right word was for it. So it was a big fat zero yeah. years approximately that you were there. There are no transcripts at all whatsoever. So it was almost as if there was no record of schooling. There's no record no. of none. I still, no, I've got no record of schooling from, from there was no like, uh, I don't know, high school, nothing. Wow. Wow. That's awful. Awful. So, so go ahead. So because um I battled, so then I wasn't able really to get a job. I was like, I was just proper, I was all over the place. So that's why my dad bought me a ticket back because in England you do get quite a lot of support, like college and stuff like that. So okay. um, he moved me back to England to live with my mum. I really battled, like, I had a lot of trauma from that place. So I lived with my mum for a bit. Um, did you go to school? Did you go to I ended up going to <clears throat> college. Okay. I did go to college and I had a job. Um, but I, could, I couldn't deal with society very well. I was very, um, I was very lost. I was very, just could, it's, it's emotions. Because I, I, for so long I was a robot. And then you come out into the world and, and then you just, you just, you just don't know how to deal with the society really. So, um, I lashed out again. I just, I just didn't know. I couldn't, couldn't, didn't turn to, couldn't turn to anyone to help because I didn't really want to talk about it because it was just it, no one understood. Like, especially in England, no one understands what it's like. You know what I mean? And when you do try and explain it, then I was just like, just Google my name. If you Google my name, it'll just. Get, it used, if you used to go Google my name, my first thing that used to pop up was run away. 17 year old has run away from a ranch in Missouri where she had no chance of taking partic participate in religious activities you know what I mean so no but and when they used to read it they used to be shocked and I was just like yeah this is this is what's happened but I was so basically I did go really downhill um my mum kicked me out I was then homeless on the streets for from 2000 from Oh, sorry. Um, October, October two thousand and ten to um, two thousand and thirteen. I was homeless oh on my. and off. That's a long time to be homeless. You know, that's awful. I was uh, sleeping on the streets at some points, like in the snow. I was freezing really heavily. Um, I was. It was just. I can't explain it. I was just from one place to another. I was, I'm surprised that I, at that point that I wasn't actually dead, to be honest. Like, the amount of drugs that I used to block everything out, I'm surprised that I'm, I was actually, I'm actually still alive. So it was just a um, way of coping. It was your way of escaping. And you were tortured in this place, and it just made things worse. Before you got into this lockdown facility, was it dabbling with, maybe marijuana or something that yeah. was before and then when you got out now you're really trying to yeah no, I got into worse worse substances like um class A's class B's What's um that? I'm sorry I oh class I oh I don't know I thought they did that in the class A so like cocaine um oh um uh I did smoke crack as well a few times and uh, ketamine and acids, mushrooms. Oh my god! Um, I mean, anything really I could get my hands on, even pharmaceuticals. At one point, like um, tablets, so like um, diazepam, um, uh, well, like benzos. I don't know how to what to call it. What you call it in America? So like, um, what is that? Um, it's just that I just started using all different, anything That's that I could get my hands on, really. And How did you get off of that? And alcohol as well. I became really dependent on alcohol. Wow. Um, so basically in 2013, I um, got into a relationship with a guy. Um, 
he told me that I had to stop using or he would leave me. So um, I stopped using except for smoking oh. marijuana and I was still drinking a bit but not as much. And um, cold turkey? I'm sorry, I'm just curious. You quit cold turkey? I went quick to cold, to cold turkey because the guy that I was with, I had to move to an area that I didn't know anyone. Okay. So um, it was an abusive relationship. I was in an abusive relationship um, mentally and physically for five years. Wow. So the, 2013. the very person that got you off the drugs is the one that was abusing you. That's awful. Yeah, he was. Um, it's a bittersweet. So you're off the drugs, but now you're with an abuse. He was, he, yeah, he was in control of me. Um, and you tolerated it because you felt like you couldn't do anything on your own. You couldn't, uh, on an emotional level, forget the financial level. I just wanted not to be great. loved. That's all I wanted. I felt right. like over my years, since I was 13 years old, I felt like I was by myself. Oh. And I've always had to do everything by myself. Right. And so you you felt like you would put up with that just so you could have lo what you yeah. love. He would he would get into my head. He would think that I was cheating on him. Um, he would think, and it sent him a bit crazy. He nearly jumped out a window with my son in his hands. What? We ended up having two kids with him. He nearly jumped out the window with my son wow. in his hands. Oh my god! Um, he punched me in the face. He's hit me. He's um, hid in my cupboard for five hours and then jumped out of the cupboard. Thought that I had someone around the house. Oh my god! Um, uh, it was a very, I couldn't get rid of him. He was, he just, every time I tried getting rid of him, he would just come back. Mm -hmm. I ended up having two kids with him because I wasn't allowed contraception. So like I would have the implant in. What? And if, if I had the, if I, um, if I took, if I had the implant in, he'd call it a slag tag. So, um, so slag basically. Tag? What the hell? Yeah. So basically someone that sleeps around. And that's what he'd call it. That's why you've got the implant. So because you have birth control, you're a slut? Uh, that's just yeah. crazy. That's crazy. He was a very controlling oh, person at the end of the like day. He just liked to be, he was a narcissist. Highly abusive relationship. And so how did you finally end it um, or escape? It sounds like you had to escape from him. So basically, um, I fleed from our house that we were living in, and me and the kids were homeless for about six months. Mm -hmm. So we were staying in hotels and um, like people's houses. And then I got rehoused. He was finding out my life, but then his mum passed away, and then he found out where I lived. Oh, no. Was, he then came into my house and um, he wouldn't leave. Um, that night, I ended up getting sexually assaulted by him and I had to uh, call the police. Oh, my God. And, um, yeah, so we called the police and now there's a restraining order. He's not allowed anywhere near me for a year. Oh, my God, that's awful. And then for your kids to be there while you're getting sexually assaulted, I'm sure they were there in the house. Okay. Yeah, they were in bed. Oh, that's so sad. I'm so sorry. That's awful. So he, he got arrested for this? He got arrested, but because it's my word against his, he hasn't been charged. What? That is awful. Awful. Don't even get me started about that. Don't. Yeah. He's got 200 and something entries in the police system and he's been arrested for a rape twice before but he's never he's never actually he's never he's only been to prison twice but because of how the corrupt system is it doesn't work does it so i not anywhere near me but i'm so much happier um i i'm glad i became a security guard because um like i just want to help people so i do security work now Kids go to regularly at school, like, and everything's just falling to, falling into place now. Oh, that's good. And that probably empowers you, too. Yes, yeah, so I, I believe, like, everything that's happened in my past, it's made me a stronger person who I am. I know how cruel the world can be, so I'm a bit more 
weary and stuff like that like that what kind of way but at the end of the day um, my words can help people and I can help people that have been through similar situations like me mm-hmm. and I'm always there to support people I'm always there I'm always all my friends always call me if they've got problems and stuff and they just need someone to talk to they're always on the phone to me so like I'm like an agony aunt <laughs> it's made you a compassionate person you're an activist Chanel, you are doing amazing things um, to make a difference in society. For example, you have gotten in touch with media, Bell Magazine and Crime Magazine in England. Also, there's going to be a documentary and perhaps a movie. Do you want to talk about? So uh, basically, um, at the moment, um, we have got media coming out. <clears throat> we've got a couple of magazines i'm also going to be going on a couple of tv programs um um but at the moment we've got to wait until something happens with arrested before that can come out into the media that's what we've, we've just recently found out the other day i forgot to let you know but um so but they've written a report they read it out to me it's absolutely it's a really good um article they've written so we're just waiting for the right time to put it out into the magazine but we've also got i'm going to be getting a book out about um awareness i'm also starting a charity in england um to raise money for troubled troubled teens and where they can go from after that um like help with like because uh, I know in America you got to pay for therapy and stuff like that so to help girls get therapy and several other things so oh. we're just um, taking it all step by step really and just try and get the awareness out there and so we can get this stopped because I'm not going to stop I, I, so I'll bring it to my grave if I have to I'm not going to stop until all these places shut down how is it looking right now? There's been numerous reports. The FBI have, has been in this compound. Um, CPS has been in there numerous times. What's going on now? There's a lot of heat going on because Amanda Householder, who is the daughter of the owner of the Circle of Hope Girls Ranch in Missouri, she is telling her story, and she has a, over 100,000 followers. There's a lot of heat going on right now. So can you tell me anything that, or are you not at liberty? Um, no, well, there's a, we wouldn't have been able to do it without all the support that we're getting on TikTok. Like, I can't actually believe all the support. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be as far as we are now. I agree. Um, uh, we have told the sheriffs, we've told the FBI, and we have got some things that are, going to be making a good progress in the hopefully in a in the next couple of weeks to a month or so you know what I mean um so there is some things that are actually looking really actually quite positive out of it so um and so we're just like but we wouldn't been able to do it without TikTok personally I don't know how amazing TikTok is I agree with you Um, awareness is key that's why it's so important to keep sharing these videos because authorities don't seem to do anything Um, authorities have have been in in and out of this facility I don't know how many uh, reports have been made since when since 2009 when did this facility open the uh, the facility is open 2006 2006 until 2020 Come on, really? So it's just, it's, there's, there's been several reports to them, but sure, I don't know. Yeah. Chanel, thank you so much for being brave and telling your story about what happened to you in the lockdown reform school called Circle of Hope Girls Ranch located in Missouri. You are brave, you're inspirational, you are a strong individual, you have a good head on your shoulders, you are a true gift to this world and I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being on my show oh thank you too I it was um yeah I just want to get the awareness out so thank you so much for having me on your show as well thank you so much Chanel I appreciate you and all of the work that you're doing and it's going to be a journey and it's so amazing how all of us survivors are just bonding together and I feel that there is power in numbers 
So yeah. it's definitely brothers and sisters for life here. Oh, I love you, Chanel. Thank oh, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Chanel, for being on the show, Pieces of Victory, and being brave enough to share your story. If you are a parent and you're considering sending your child to a residential program such as boot camps for kids, reform schools, rehabilitation programs, conversion therapies, wilderness camps, and you get the idea, why would you even take that risk? I am Janine Miller, and this is Pieces of Victory. This room had no windows. No. It was pitch black inside. They were not allowed to sit down. Like, they would come and yeah. check on them to make sure they weren't sitting down. And um, they weren't allowed to go to the bathroom. Um, you'd literally open that door, and, it, like, the smell of urine would just hit you in the face. So they were urinating and having bowel movements inside. This is a room of isolation, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's mm -hmm. a room of isolation. You can't go to the bathroom whenever you want. I mean, this is worse than minimum and maximum security prison. Yeah. It's oh, at least you have, a, you can go to the bathroom. Do you have the privilege to go to the bathroom? Yeah. It's well, even when the girls, yeah. Even when the girls did go to the bathroom, we didn't have doors on the bathrooms. So there'd be someone standing over you, watching you go to the back. He the right things to say to make you trust him that he was going to, you know, um, um, be a good person to try to get the girls, you know, to, to educate them and to discipline them and make sure that they um, thought about their choices and, and changed their ways kind of thing. Um, he was very, very good with his work and very good with the, the steel that him and said to the parents, you know, or sure depth and, and their verbiage and everything. And, um, you know, uh, plus as a parent, you just, you're just looking for someone that you can trust and, and that, you, you know, you're hoping, you're always hoping that, you know, this is going to be the place that, was it statutory rape? Mm -hmm. He, well, he made threats against me. He would say, like, you tell anyone, I'm going to tell you you're a liar. Um, he would push me up against the wall, and he would literally, like, shove his foot up and be like, you're mine. Do you understand me? Oh, my and God. Those are, me. those are threats to me because I'm not here to be doing this with a 68-year-old man. Was, uh one girl that was there maybe just two weeks and we're all downstairs she had gotten called upstairs into his office and i heard him yelling and then i heard a really loud thud oh no um and it shook like the whole house oh my god and then we hear her screaming and it it was a long time did he slam her on the ground or you don't know because no one talked about what happened oh no they would explain to you exactly what it was and um like they did like a soft demonstration a soft demonstration were they demonstrating yeah. on you or what were they doing 
No, it was like all of us girls and then like one of the higher shirts just like laid down as an example and they didn't actually put the pressure but they're like we're going to put it here 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 and here. Um cuz something had happened and everybody they just gotta- refused to turn me over until um my family went to go get the police and they brought them back. And wow. then Wow. Wow, and the and the cops didn't think that there was anything wrong with that. Um, I guess not. Let's go back. The cops come. Then what happens? Uh, then the uh, owner, you know, kind of had no choice at that point but to turn me over. Uh, so uh, I don't know why, but for some reason, my family was made to leave again and then come back. What? Uh, I don't know why. Uh, but I get called upstairs they had me change into like town clothes uh because i was in my everyday work clothes right um and they packed my leaving the program what clothes that smelled from hell yes sir i'm in it knock her out yes sir and that goes for me the rest of you if she clenches her fist or she's gonna hit you that's a threat knock her out yes sir you got that ice cream Yes, sir. And it's not about religion. It's not about singling out a certain religion. It's just about stopping child abuse. I am Janine Miller, and this is Pieces of Victory. Um. I keep getting asked this. Honestly, I am ready to talk about it. It's just really long and confusing, and um, I'll be doing a YouTube video on it. But um, yes, I was sexually molested. <laughs>